G'day everyone, Lauren Cress, the business scientist here for a short video about the 16 personalities. So I mentioned this in a video I did for day one of launching your MVP from your lounge room. If you want to check that out first, go ahead and click the card here. But basically we're talking about the importance of self-discovery in order to bring an idea to the world so you can change the world for the better. One of the things I mentioned in the video is that there's this problem I've seen emerge where a lot of coaches and consultants out there, uh, particularly like online coaches, they'll kind of focus on doing this. They've got this like spiel where it's sort of like, well, this is what I did to be successful. Therefore, if you want to be successful like me, you just need to do the same things as me. Uh, the big problem with that is that we all have different personality traits and strengths and weaknesses. And if we're not playing to our strengths, then we're sort of working against ourselves and we're going to feel quite like fragmented or quite, you know, like at war with ourselves because we're trying to force ourselves to do things that don't really play to our strengths. So I suggested coming over here to 16 personalities and I'm just going to quickly sort of explain what this looks like. Uh, it's absolutely free. You can get so much value for free. It's really, really cool. So on this screen here, you're seeing the logged in version. So I, I have a free login to 16 personalities. Anyone can get it. Uh, and once you're logged in, this is sort of the back end. but I logged in just so you could see what the profile looks like. You can take the test without logging in. Uh, and once you do the test, it will give you sort of like a free login for you to continue accessing your profile because it's really annoying if you go ahead and do all this work and spend all this time answering these questions and then you've got your profile and then you can never get your results again. So uh, it's, it's really user-friendly, really simple to take this test. So basically when you get to the homepage, it's gonna say, take the test. Uh, again, this is the link. The link will be in the description as well, or you can just Google 16 personalities and this will turn up. So I'm just gonna click take the test so you can see what this looks like. So as it says here, it's a free personality test and it sort of says like, okay, it's fast and easy. You need to be yourself and you need to complete it all. I find this part a bit funny because uh, it says try not to leave any neutral answers, but they actually give you the option to answer things neutrally, which I think is a bit silly. So I'll show you what, what I mean. So this is the sort of questions you're going to be asked. So there'll be a statement and you'll be asked to uh, rate how strongly you agree or disagree with it. But this little button in the middle, that's neutral. So just avoid that. Don't do the neutral one. And by the way, you can access this on mobile as well. So if you want to do this on your phone instead of on your desktop or you want to do an iPad, it's all very simple to take. It's very user-friendly. So uh, yeah, go ahead and basically rate how strongly you agree or disagree with each of these things. It will take you, I think it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do. It could take a little bit longer just depending on whether you've done these types of tests before, how long you think about it, but just remember to be yourself. So don't overthink things and don't answer things the way you wish people saw you or the way you wish you were. Answer them as honestly you can so that you can really get an accurate result. So once you do the test, you're basically going to get this five letter code of what you are. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about what that looks like. So see here, it says ENFP. So these letters denote different personality traits and they will look different for different people. So I'll ju I'm just going to scroll down and explain a little bit about how that works and you'll be able to see this in your results as well. So basically the way that the results will pop up after you've done the test is it'll take you to this page. So you'll get your code up here and you'll see that actually in this campaigner personality type that I am, it's said both for A and T. So at this point, we're only focusing on the commonalities for people who are in this, but not so much the assertive and turbulent characteristics, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. So if you go through, you'll see it, it talks about things like your strengths and weaknesses, your romantic relationships, career paths, workplace habits. This is going to be really helpful for you, particularly looking at the career stuff from our perspective when thinking about your MVP, because it's going to tell you, you know, a little bit about what you might uh, be doing in the workplace. So for instance, for me, if I'm uh, reporting to other people, see it says like I'm growth oriented. <laughs> so um, I really like to see things change. I like to learn. And that's actually a really important 
uh, sort of mindset we want to adopt when we're launching an MVP. So have a look at, you know, this will be pretty honest with you. I'll say the things that, you know, you might have issues with as well. Uh, But, you know, see how true it is for you because you might read some things and go, no, that's really not me. And that could be partly because of this A and T as well. Uh, And also it could be to do with how strongly you are on each of these traits in this code. So I'll go through this code in a little bit more detail because you're probably like, Lauren, what does this mean? So if we look down the right here, basically what this code is, is it's telling you whether you more strongly fall on one side of a personality trait or the other. So we have extroverted and introverted, intuitive and observant, thinking and feeling, judging and prospecting, and assertive and turbulent. Now, you can't click into each of these here, but there is more information about each of these uh, sort of elements. So you just need to dig in a little bit more. So if you head over to articles and surveys, it's got sort of different uh, pieces of information to help you understand more about what each of these means. So I'm going to go over to theory. And you can see here, it sort of talks a little bit about types versus traits and how valid this way is of doing things. But if you come down to these five personality aspects, it's going to tell you more about each of these elements of the code. So we've got mind, and it talks about what introverted individuals are like versus extroverted individuals like. So it's not that introverted people don't need people around them and extroverted people don't like alone time, but you will exist somewhere on the sliding scale. So if I just go back to my profile for a second, I'll just quickly show you how, so you can kind of be in different places on this, right? So you could be, uh, for me, I'm really extroverted. uh, So I don't like to spend too much time on my own, but I can spend time on my own and I do need to spend some time on my own where someone who's like in the middle might find that they're not really extroverted or introverted. They're kind of like, they like a bit of both worlds. Um, Intuitive and observant, you know, you can see for me, I'm quite far along on the intuitive, but then on thinking and feeling and judging and prospecting assertive and turbulent, pretty much in the middle on all of these. So these characteristics are stronger than these ones. Let's just go back and have a look more at those different elements. So we have mind, we have talked about that. This is a kind of an initial summary and you can read more about this as well. Uh, Our energy. So this is about how we see the world and process information. So you could be more observant uh, and that's really about being sort of hands-on, practical, pragmatic or intuitive, which is more about creativity and open-mindedness and being curious. And again, you can read more about that as well. In terms of your nature, this is, okay, how do we make decisions? How do we cope with our emotions? So you have people who are thinking, who are very focused on reasoning, objectivity, rationality, and looking at the logic over the emotions, where with feeling, you have people who are more sensitive to how others are feeling, Uh, and they tend to be a bit more empathetic. So if you remember back to my profile, this is where I actually sat like pretty much in the middle of these two things. And that could be the case for you as well. So you might kind of be able to relate to both of these, which means that say you're an ENFP like me, you might also really be able to relate to ENTP characteristics because you kind of sit somewhere in the middle here. And we have tactics. So this is about how we approach work, planning and decision-making, right? So really, really important if we think about our MVP. So people who are judging are going to be, you know, like your bookshelf is in alphabetical order, uh, you know, you prefer structure and you prefer things to be planned. Where someone who's on more the prospecting side is going to be able to sort of riff on the spot. They're probably usually quite good at, you know, sales and things like that. They don't need things to be uh, outlined in order. For me, I'm very much, again, in the middle of these two things. I like some structure, uh, but I also really like to see what happens in the moment. And then we have identity. So identity is about how confident we are in ourselves, in our decisions and in our abilities. So people who are assertive are going to be more confident, a bit more sure of themselves and not doubting themselves as much. They're also a bit more resistant to stress. Uh, where turbulent people are going to be quite sensitive to stress and someone who might be a little bit more likely to have the imposter syndrome, you know, that's kind of what this person is going through. 
Uh, for me, I sit somewhere between these two, a little bit more on the assertive side, which is great. Probably would prefer to be even a little bit more on this side. Uh, but now we can start to understand, okay, well, this is why I doubt myself. You know, we can actually understand what's going on. But what I would say is have a look at what other people are like, because it will help you to understand what they might be going through as well. And I would just suggest having a read through again, what we just covered here in terms of these different aspects of your personality, because it is going to help you understand a bit of the theory behind why that personality result can be so accurate and also why it can be, you know, not a hundred percent. So to finish off, I'm just going to go back to my personality and I'm going to explain a little bit about how what this did for me was just give me a little bit more understanding about my strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to go back to this profile and just read kind of a little bit about what it says. Um, so bullet point wise, it's that I'm curious, observant, energetic and enthusiastic, good communicator. No, for me, I'm not so great at relaxing, <laughs> popular and friendly. Um, but my weaknesses is I can have poor practical skills. Now, if you remember, the practical skills comes from that intuitive versus observant. So for me, I am, yeah, pretty far on the intuitive side, but I'm not like 100% intuitive. I have, you know, about 37% that's observant. So I still have some practical skills, but that's an example of how looking at your percentages will help you understand how much of this applies to you. So it's not an all or nothing thing. Um, sometimes I do find it a bit difficult to focus, but not too much. Uh, overthink things, get stressed easily. That's balanced out by the fact that I'm a little bit more on the assertive side rather than the turbulent. Um, highly emotional, independent to a fault. So yeah, that's definitely true for me. And I think for a lot of entrepreneurs as well. So you might have something that's, you know, completely different to me, right? And that's why it doesn't really make sense for me to say, well, this is what I did. Therefore, this is what you should do. So it's really important. You start digging into what your strengths are, what sort of careers suit you, uh, and understand maybe a little bit about why, you get pulled and drawn towards certain things. So for me, like this is, I can really relate to it. It says, if there's a challenge campaign as faced when selecting a career, it isn't that they lack talent or options or drive. It's that there are so many things out there that are just cool. And that's often how I feel. It's really hard to commit to anything because I want to do everything. If you want to understand more about personality types in a really fun way, I highly suggest checking out the YouTuber Frank James, who kind of illustrates what this looks like in the real world with all sorts of sketches. It's really, really fun. And if you want to understand more about how each of these personality traits could affect your business or how you work with people, it's also really powerful. So uh, it could be a fun way to kind of get this a little bit more under your belt and understand what people are like when they have different personalities. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you've got questions about building your MVP, leave it in the comments and it might just be featured on a future episode. Check out what's up next for more content from my channel.